Wow, what an incredible couple of days. We've got the complete specifications on the Panasonic Lumix GH6. We have photos of the camera from every single angle. We can see things like a full HDMI slot. It's got CF Express Type B. There's so many different, this is a video powerhouse and you can see from the specifications here that it is quite the camera. But while this was going on, many of you had commented and saying, Simon, have you heard about the Panasonic S1H Mark II? Have you heard about the specifications for that camera? Where is it? Is that coming out soon? I heard that it's only about six months away that we're gonna be getting it this year. Well, I do remember when the specifications came out last year, I thought, hmm, there's something fishy about these. And so I went taking a look to see if there had been any further updates. And what I'm gonna be presenting to you today is the latest rumored specifications for the Panasonic Lumix S1H Mark II. However, I'm gonna structure the video in two ways. In the first segment coming up, I'm gonna show you all the specifications. And I'm gonna tell you what I think is suspect. And then in the next part of the video, I'm gonna go into detail as to why it is suspect and why I think you shouldn't trust these specifications. I do not believe, as has been said, that these come from people who had access to an engineering sample of the camera and that it is at Panasonic. They're working on this camera. It's, they've got an engineering sample and it's capable of all sorts of wonderful things. So let's go ahead and take a look at the specifications it's gonna have an upgraded full frame sensor. So the previous version had a full frame sensor. This one will have 34 megapixels and it's also gonna have 14 plus stops of dynamic range. Now, 34 megapixels seems a little low for this camera based on everything that we're seeing coming out. I mean, pretty well any camera at this price point is gonna do 8K or 6K 60 at the very least. So doing anything less than 8K or 6K would well be a disappointment. But as far as dynamic range goes, 14 plus stops, it's not bad, it's not great. It's kind of where you'd expect the Canon R5 to be. But for a camera that's really focused on video, I'd really hope to see 16 plus stops of dynamic range as we're seeing in some cinema cameras around the same price point. But in terms of IBIS, 6.5 stops of IBIS, which is pretty good. I mean, it's not great. I mean, when it, if you really want the best kind of image stabilization, you really want to look at Panasonic's Micro Four Thirds. I mean, that's truly, truly incredible, especially the GH6 with that gyro. Again, what a beautiful camera that is. Of course, it's gonna have V-Log and it's gonna rumor to have the depth from defocus, autofocus system, no surprises there. The Panasonic GH6 also has the DFD autofocus system, the contrast detect autofocus system. But now I wanna to get to the video resolutions. This camera is supposed to have 8K at 24 frames per second, 420, 10 bit at 600 megabits per second. And I keep looking at this here and thinking like, okay, wait a minute, it's only gonna do 24 frames per second? No 30 frames per second? No 25 frames per second? 420, 10 bit. Usually if you're gonna do 10 bit, you're gonna do 422. I'm really having trouble trying to understand why you would do 10 bit 420 when normally you would do 422. Now, as far as 6K60 goes, it can do 422 10 bit but it has a cropped mode and it's only 200 megabits per second. So a slight difference in the amount of bandwidth that it's going to push. Uh, it is gonna do 6K 24, 25 and 30 frames per second, 10 bit 422 at 400 megabits. It's gonna do 5.6K oversampled C4K as well as C4K 60 and C4K 120, both 10 bit 422 at 400 megabits per second. And I should silence my watch here. It's pretty bad when I do that, isn't it? I just set how my mouth seems to forget. So let's put it into quiet mode here. Let's get back to these specifications. In 4K, it's capable of doing up to 180 frames per second. And that's rather significant. That means it's gonna to have to push through an awful lot of data. And I'd really be surprised if this full frame sensor, or if, this is, if it doesn't have a backside illuminated stack sensor to be able to process a lot more information and to provide better low light. As far as, Full HD, that's 1920 by 1080, up to 300 frames per second. So it'll do 240 and 300 frames per second, 422 10-bit, 100 megabits per second and 240. And it drops down to 8-bit 420 at 50 megabits. 50 megabits. It's, an, it's really kind of light. I, I, this isn't what's bugging me about these rumors. I would expect if 300, if 300 frames per second only requires 50 megabits, then why not bump that up a little bit more, provide better quality, go to 10 bit. But here's the problem I have with this. 34 megapixel full frame sensor. A full frame sensor 
has an aspect ratio of three to two. And so if you're gonna be able to do 8K, which it claims to be able to do 8K at 24 frames per second, that's not possible on a full frame sensor. And let me explain why. So just imagine that this red rectangle is the full frame sensor on the current S1H. It has the exact same aspect ratio of three to two, and this accurately represents the shape of the full frame sensor, although it's a little bigger. And it's 6,000 by 4,000, which is a three to two aspect ratio, giving us 24 megapixels. And many of you have told me that, well, to do 8K, all you need is 33 megapixels. And if you do the math, if you multiply 7680 by 4320, that is 8K UHD. And you actually require just over 33 megapixels. However, to do 8K DCI, it's 8192 by 4320, and it requires at least 35 megapixels, but that's making an assumption. Again, this is the S1H. It's got an aspect ratio of 6,000 by 4,000. So we need to make it wide enough to be able to do 8K. So the first thing we do is we multiply 6,000 by 1.28, and we multiply 4,000 by 1.28. We have to multiply it by the same number because we're gonna maintain that same aspect ratio. And that gives us 7680 by 5120, which is 8K UHD in this case, with a total megapixels of 39.321 megapixels. And of course, if we go 8K DCI, we multiply 6000 by 1.3653 repeating, and 4000 by the same number to keep that same aspect ratio, and that gives us a total of 8192 by 5462, or 44.744 megapixels. And this is why you'll see cameras like the R5 having a minimum of 45 megapixels or the Nikon Z9 also with 45 megapixels because you're dealing with a full frame sensor and that is the key. It has a three to two aspect ratio. And I know what some of you are thinking. Yeah, but there are cinema cameras that have a 7680 by 4320 or something very similar because they're using a Super 35 sensor. It has a different aspect ratio. It has the exact same aspect ratio as cinema, it has 16 by nine. And so with 34 megapixels on a Super 35, yes, you could deliver 8K UHD. But here's another problem I have, assuming it was gonna have a Super 35, that wouldn't allow for DCI 8K. And a camera priced where the S1H Mark II is going to be, I couldn't see them giving you 8K UHD and not offering 8K DCI. It just doesn't make sense. So if we go back and look at the specifications and we see this is supposed to have a full frame sensor of only 34 megapixels, which would exclude 8K UHD and 8K DCI because of the aspect ratio. Yes, 6K60 would be possible, but it wouldn't be able to produce 8K UHD or DCI. It would require a Super 35. And you see, if this is coming from people who have access to the actual engineering unit, well, they would know this. They would know all this information. And these are some fundamental errors. They've either got the sensor wrong, which is a pretty big deal, or they've got characteristics of the sensor wrong, or they've got the video profiles wrong. And it is for that reason that I think that these rumors are completely off base. I think what is happening is somebody has thought, hey, let's start a rumor on the Panasonic S1H Mark II, um, it's been just, well, I don't even think it's been two years yet. It's been about two years since we got the announcement for the S1 and the S1R, but the S1H didn't come until later in the year, I think October-ish timeframe. So I don't think we're quite due for the S1H Mark II until probably next year. And these specifications to me, they just don't add up. They don't make any sense. The dynamic range seems a little bit low. Uh, the IBIS also seems a little bit low, and the frame rates for the camera, 8K, 24 frames per second. I would expect at least 8K, 30 frames per second, and we see the Nikon Z9 tossing out at $5,500, 8K, 60 frames per second. We've got the Canon R5C, which does 8K, 60 frames per second, all at 325 megabytes per second, which is a much higher bit rate. So looking at the S1H Mark II, these leaked specifications, these so-called leaked specifications, in relation to what we know about cameras today, it's not all that impressive. It's not that impressive at all. And they're fundamentally flawed. So if you're excited about the S1H Mark II, 
I would wait another year. I wouldn't expect to get too many leak specifications. Panasonic is like Sony. They do a very good job of avoiding leaks. And it's very rare that we would get leaks this early into the product development cycle. So as far as an engineering sample that was where somebody had their hands on and they've leaked the information, I don't believe it for one minute. However, today at six o'clock or 1800 hours, that's New York time, Toronto time, or Montreal time, I'm gonna be doing a live stream and we're gonna go into detail about the OM1, the GH6, and we're also gonna talk about the Panasonic S1H Mark II. And we're gonna argue whether the OM1 is the best camera or the GH6. And this is gonna be kind of a, like a PBS debate. And we're not gonna be throwing tables and chairs. It's not gonna be a barroom brawl. This is not to insult anybody that likes either camera, but it should be fun. And if you've got questions and you wanna participate in the debate, it's gonna be live. So join us again at 6 p.m. or 1800 hours, New York, Toronto time. And that's going to be really exciting. I've got four guests with me, people who are expert, uh, that, that are directors, uh, videographers, sound people, um, experts in the retail industry where they are have experience of decades of experience selling cameras like these. So that's coming up at six o'clock tonight. But one other thing too, before I let you go, if you haven't heard, I am giving away an AngelBird AV Pro SE 512 gigabyte CF Express card, perfect for the Panasonic G86. And an AV Pro SX 160 gig card. This one's capable of a minimum sustained speed, regardless of how much content is on the card, of 1,480 megabytes per second. Bytes, not bits. That's 1.5 gigabit, gigabytes, I'm sorry. I keep saying bits for some reason. And this one here has a much slower minimum sustained speed of 800 megabytes per second, but higher capacity of 512. And what that allows you to do is quite simply is, whether you have the R5, the R5C, the GH6, the Nikon Z9, you can easily record in the maximum video frame rate, which is 8K 60 frames per second, 6K 60, or on the GH6 using Apple ProRes, which outputs at 1.9 gigabits per second. So uh, both cards are really, really terrific. And even if you don't win them, they're $179.99, but I'm gonna be giving them away. Thanks to Angel Bird for offering them up as prizes. You have, Here's the qualifications, they're pretty simple. Number one, you have to be a subscriber of this channel, so click that subscribe button. You have to be 18 years of age or older, and if you're not, then get an adult or a guardian to subscribe on your behalf. And number three, you have to have a valid mailing address somewhere located on the planet. You have to have Terran citizenship, meaning you're an Earthling, you can't be off world. And I'll be conducting the draw at the end of the month, well, let's say March the 1st, because I wanna make sure everybody has a chance to subscribe and then I'll spend the next day because I have to collate. It takes a while to go through each screen to collate all the subscribers and then I'll pick a winner. I already gave one of these away, the 512 gig AV Pro SE card last Thursday at our live stream. So you never know, tune in, you never know what's gonna be discussed. You'll win just by showing up and enjoying great content, but you could win like Leet Leet who won the 512 gig card. I shipped it out a couple of days ago and he's supposed to be getting that somewhere around the end of the month. So I'm always giving away good stuff on this channel. Not only do you get great timely news and information and great analysis and opinion, you also get great prizes. What other channel gives away top quality cars like Angelbird or lenses from Canon or even the R5 camera? And yes, I'm still giving away the R5 camera, but nothing's changed there. It's gonna be based on when I hit 100,000 subscribers. If you wanna go ahead and look at the video that I put out a while ago, that's the whole focus. And until I get to around 70 or 80 or maybe even 90,000 subscribers, I'm not going to be mentioning it in every video. Otherwise, it's just going to get, well, annoying. It's, you're going to get tired of hearing about it. So I am still planning on giving that camera away, the Canon EOS R5, to one lucky viewer once this channel reaches 100,000 viewers. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.